these are the steps to draw an antibody and an antigen's interactions when a person has a fever. First, we will get a screenshot of the antibody. In your warm-up, you're going to click Generate New Random Protein. Then you're going to press Start. After four to five seconds, you're going to take a screenshot of the antibody. And then you're going to paste it into your Google Drawing. Go ahead and shrink your protein so that it fits into your Google Drawing with ample space above it. Next, we need to draw the antigen that fits together with the antibody with a puzzle-like puzzle piece formation. So we're going to zoom in and then outline the protein with the scribble function. I'll start right about here. And then I'll have the top of my antigen kind of like a round shape. Now I have my antibody and antigen. Let's go ahead and label both so we can avoid any confusion. Click the T for a text box. And then we'll call the one underneath the antibody. Now that we have our antibody and antigen represented by symbols, we need to demonstrate what is the interaction between the polar and nonpolar parts of antigen and antibodies. I'm going to see how many polar amino acids there are in the antibody. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to make five copies of the polar particle. Copy. Paste, control C, control V, that's five. And then I'm going to bring them down to the puzzle piece formation where the polar and the polar attract. And I'm only going to do the bottom half of the antigen because that's what needs to be focused upon, not the antigen in its entirety. And there's one nonpolar amino acid that'll attract the nonpolar region of the antigen. Now these both look benign or they both look useful and it can get confusing which is the harmful agent in this model. So we're going to take the skull symbol and paste it on the antigen so we can keep track. What's the harmful component? And now we can see that when a person starts to have a fever, the antigen and antibody have been connected strongly due to the antigen fitting perfectly inside of the antibody and the attraction between the polar regions of both molecules will attract as well as the nonpolar regions. Now we can draw what happens when the fever starts to rise inside of a patient. 
in your warm-up, you were instructed to raise the temperature of the surroundings, causing the protein to move like this. And after five seconds, you can lower the temperature and take a screenshot of that. This is the new structure of the protein. Paste it inside of your model. Shrink it to the size where you can add things above it. And now we're going to move this antigen to the middle side. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select the antigen and antibody, press Control C, Control V, and then carry it all over, and then delete my original protein. That way, the antigen doesn't have to be redrawn. And you should be able to notice that the shape of the two no longer complement one another. The shape of this antigen will not fit like a puzzle piece with this antibiotic, the way this antibody fits with the antigen. So the attraction is going to be weak between the two. And we can indicate that with arrows. going to show one arrow here and it shows that the antibody can now move away freely let's see if I can click on it So the antibody and antigen are able to separate because the structure has changed. And for some students, the polar and polar interactions will also be altered in a major way. But here, it's just a structure that's altering the interaction attraction. Let's indicate that these two attract since the second one indicates that they are able to separate easily. And after this, we will finish the, the last model. We could just scoot this arrow a little bit towards the right. There we go. So it should be very apparent that these two attract and these two can move apart. And finally, with the antigen able to move freely it will multiply within a person's body, causing death. So here, we can show that the antibody stays the same shape as it was in the previous model, no longer the puzzle piece that fits the antigen, and the antigen can multiply. So I'm going to shrink this and multiply my antigens. You can draw as many as you'd like. But the antigens take over the body, causing failure to many functions in the person. And that is how you're going to 
draw your model for the antigen and antibody um, before, during, and after. The remainder of the assignment you need to do on your own, where you represent the temperature changes with bar graphs, the connection strength changes between antibody and antigen as bar graphs. Uh, legend and key, as long as you label your parts, you should be fine. And go ahead and give a two-sentence explanation for each model.